Hey, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today on hand I have this, this, and this. So what are these? Well, this is Intel's seventh generation Core i7 7700K processor. This here is a nifty little tool uh, that I picked up off eBay for just $14 Aussie delivered. Uh, and it's a 3D printed D-Lid tool for Ivy Bridge, uh, Devil's Canyon, uh, the Haswell, Skylake and KB Lake processors. And finally, this is some Liquid Pro or uh, Liquid Metal as it's probably better known. Throw in some kind of inward pressure creating tool into the mix like a clamper of ice and you can MacGyver your way to much lower operating temperatures. Before I get to that though, a quick backstory as to why I'm doing this. A few weeks ago I built my new GPU test rig using the 7700K and the plan was to run this benchmark system at 4.9 to 5 gigahertz. The cooler of choice was Corsair's excellent Hydro H100 IV2 and I was expecting to see fairly reasonable operating temperatures. What I saw at 4.9 GHz using 1.3 volts was full load temperatures well into the 90s. In fact the system peaked at around 96 to 97 degrees. As a result, I ended up backing the system off to the same 4.5 GHz frequency that I ran my previous 6700K test system at to ensure 100% stability at all times when benchmarking. A few viewers commented that I must be doing something wrong. It was the radiator placement, I was using too much voltage despite the fact that I actually said I was using 1.3 volts, and so on. Most of you seem to realise though that the 7700K is just a hot chip, and the reason for this is down to the fact that Intel used a poor quality thermal interface material. That being the case, a good number of you asked me to de-lid my 7700K processor and try again, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. The first step is to pop the 7700K chip into the de-lid tool and apply some pressure. This then breaks the heat spreader's grip on the PCB. This is done easily enough, and rather than film myself doing this down the shed using a bench vise, I just used a cheap clamp. With the lid removed, it was simply a matter of cleaning off the rubbish Intel put on the die and replacing it with some liquid metal. At this point you could fix the heat spreader back in place using an adhesive, but I recommend just leaving it sitting on top and letting the LGA socket clamp the processor and heat spreader in place. Okay, so now that we've done all that, it's time to see how much of an impact this has had on operating temperatures. Installing the 7700K back into my Corsair test machine, I was shocked to find that at 4.9 GHz using the same 1.3 volts, the maximum stress temp never exceeded 73 degrees, and for the most part hovered around 70 degrees. I should also note that the fans on my H100i weren't even spinning up, as the temp target for the performance mode was set at 80 degrees. So this technically isn't even an apples to apples comparison. When forcing the fans to to spin up, the temps maxed out at around 68 degrees. I should also note that my testing was done with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. Unfortunately with 1.3 volts I couldn't get my system to post at 5 gigahertz. Going up to 3.5 volts got me to the Windows load screen but there the system would lock up. Upping the voltage to 1.4 got me into Windows but the system wasn't 100% stable. So for that 5 gigahertz frequency I will need to do a bit more tinkering. That said, for now I'm more than pleased with the 4.9 GHz operating frequency, especially given how low those temps now are, hovering around the 70 degree mark at full load. So if you own an unlocked 7th generation Intel processor and you're serious about overclocking, d is the way to go. Unfortunately doing so comes with a bit of risk, and the worst part being that you will void your warranty. I have to say this is really poor form from Intel, doing this to their unlocked processors. If it wasn't already a low enough blow that Intel were charging a premium for their unlocked processors, they're now doing so while providing the same rubbish thermal interface material that they use on their locked models. As a PC enthusiast and a consumer, I really can't stand this, and the need for AMD to deliver next month is more important than ever. All up, I spent $14 on the D-Lid tool, which I grabbed off eBay, uh, $45 on the Liquid Pro, and then of course you still need a CPU cooler for the unlocked uh, Intel processors, as they don't come with one, and so I used this Corsair model here, and that's about $150. Uh, by the way, all these prices are in Australian dollars that I'm quoting. So Intel is stinging overclock as about a $40 premium for their unlocked Core i7, and then you need to buy a cooler and spend about another $60 or so, uh, so you can actually overclock it without risk of it cooking itself. Anyway, in summary, I'm both impressed and appalled by the improvements that this little D-Lit experiment produced. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and if you think I've earned it, consider giving this video a like. Thanks, I'm your host Steve, and I hope to catch you again soon.